إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له في ربوبيته وأولهيته وسلطانه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله مؤيد لبرهانه الداعي إلى جناته ورضوانه صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأنصاره وأعوانه وسلم تسليما وبيجان Going over the advice that the Sheikh Salih al Fawzan gave about a righteous woman or the proof for a righteous woman in a household. And he began with the woman establishing the obligatory acts of worship in her house. And how establishing those obligatory acts of worship is going to bring peace to the house and she's going to be, be an example for the children. And that is very important in their upbringing. And then the Sheikh, he went on to inform us that. The understanding of ibadah is wider than just for performing those acts. However, in performing those acts, that's going to be the greatest thing to aid her in performing her duties with perfection. It's calm with perfection. Now, and he says, so the righteous woman, she does her obligatory duties and she fulfills her obligation and her role by fulfilling those actions in her household. And she stands before her Lord, khashia that she's humble and fearful of her Lord when she stands up for prayer. Now, then he said the second thing, second, that the woman in her house, she's second, she's in quality, and she's the one who makes the house stable. She's the one that causes stability in the house. Sisters, you must listen. This is your role. This is your role as a Muslim woman in general and as a mother and a wife specifically. That many problems that take place, it is because the woman doesn't recognize her role. And women, the women that, that do recognize or see their role, sometimes they see it as something, uh, <coughs> slavery, humility, uh, humiliation or something like that. No, this is an honorable role because of Allah's justice. And had Allah uh, not granted you this role, then it's to be questioned. But as long as this role was granted to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to believe they have a raised station in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he gives you out an obligation. I'll use a weak example. Allah is the best example. But just say, for instance, thinking worldly, if the President of the United States uh, or any person, Bill Gates, anybody that you consider to be a person of prestige as far as worldly matters, were to ask you to, you know, I like you. Could you? I want you to clean up all of these offices of Microsoft. Would you be? Uh, would you be insulted by that? I, I'm not Bill Gates. He gave me a job. I'm starting to clean an office, but I'm gonna work my way up. I mean, this is people. That's what how people think. And they let me in the White House. They want me to clean. Clean. They want me to clean the White House. Would somebody be insulted by being asked to clean the White House? I don't think. And thinking of in the worldly matter, they would. So how's it when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given this woman a role of establishing? Stability in the home by serving the husband and raising the children. How could this be looked at as something that's humiliation and degradation? This is a position of honor. This is a position of honor that the Kufar, look at their societies, the Kufar societies. The Kufar wants to believe that it's a position of degradation and humiliation, but look at their societies when a woman has entered into the workplace. What has happened to their societies? Prophet Rasulullah said, we said, our people will never be successful who has a woman as their leader. Where's the success? In these societies, the women have gone out to her instead of being Masuna, she's being protected, honored in her house, she's going out to the workplace. So now you can, if I'm a trash man, you can lift trash with me. Ah, oh, come on. If I'm a carpenter, you can be come bang nails and wear a tool belt with me. This is honor? Because of a paycheck? This is honor? And the children, what is happening to the children when both parents go out to the workplace? And as we began the lecture, that the first right before you even get married, the rights of the children begin. So this going out of the home without necessity, it harms the children. And kulukum mas'ulun an ra'ayati. And everybody's going to be responsible and questioned about their flock. Now, so the Shaykh said, Thanin al mar'a, fin bayt sakin, ustakrar, this zawj wal bayt. The woman, she's, she's the repose, the tranquility, and the stability for the husband and the house. The husband and the house. And brothers, this is important that Allah is blessed with a righteous wife that you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank your wife for that. Man, Whoever hasn't thanked the people hasn't thanked Allah. So thank that woman who's been by your side. Who, the least thing that a wife does 
and, and, and this is really a great thing, the least thing that a wife does, say she can't cook. She straightens up, but she doesn't know how to clean. You know, because, you know, I'm raised in the old school. Women used to clean, talk about scrub those woodworks, scrub down those steps, pull that furniture out. But then a lot of times you get the young sister, they straighten out there, sweep, mop a little bit, but you check behind the couch, it's a mess. So <laughs> she straightens up, <laughs> she straightens up, but she doesn't know how to clean. But the greatest thing that she does for you, I feel when you see that fifth now, and you return home, and then she beautifies herself, she protects you from going to the hellfire. If that's it, then you have a lot to thank Allah for, and you have a lot to thank her for. Because trust me, and we've all, you know, committed sins. Once you commit a sin, it just leads to worse sins. You're that close. Because, as Ahl Sunnah believes, that sins cause the Iman to decrease. And this is sins in general. So imagine if you committed a major sin, like fornication, how low would your Iman become and how closer would you be to committing something greater than that? So if the benefit of this woman is only that she, when you order her, she protects your private parts. Then that's enough to thank her for. And this is for the brothers, you know, sisters. And I just wanted to bring up attention to that. Uh, it is not uh, recommended for a person that's trying to become a better Muslim, a better husband, or a better wife. That the, each party focuses on the obligation of the other. That each party, the husband, he's, his studies, every time he cracks up from hadith, he's, he's reading the rights of the husband. The woman, every time she cracks up in the book of Hadith, she's reading about the rights of the woman so she can wait till you get home from work. See, he can read this one. You know? The brother the same way. Hey, you know what's that Hadith? Yeah, see, I knew it was right. Wait till I get home. So it's, it should be each individual is focusing on what Allah has obligated them to do. Because if the man focuses on his obligations and the woman focuses on her obligations, then everybody's going to be getting their rights. But if the woman's focused on what he's supposed to be doing and he's focused on what she's supposed to be doing, both of them are going to be falling short. So everybody needs to focus on their duty. Everybody needs to focus on their duty, inshallah ta'ala. قال الله تعالى ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك لآية لكوم يتفكرون. So this مودة ورحمة as the ulama explained should be accompanied with a thing called insijan. We talked about that. Compatibility. This NC jam that brings the, the husband and wife together. And just like Al Khawf wa Raja concerning Iman are like the two wings of the believers, having fear and hope in Allah, Al Mawadda, love and Rahmah are the two wings that makes the marriage life successful. Because if you lost one, the other one is not going to benefit the situation. If you have love, you love her, but no mercy. That's my right. You, you, you write it right there in the book. You better do it. Get it done. It's no mercy. He never lets her get away with anything. Everything that is his right, this book, it has to be done when it's supposed to be done. When I say it, no mercy. This is going to harm the marriage. This is going to harm the marriage. But what that? In love. The people get married. They're really not compatible. Uh, how do you feel? You know, I mean, he's okay, but you know, alhamdulillah, he takes care of me. She doesn't love him. And he feels that energy. That she's not my wife, he's not in love with me. The same thing. The sister comes in. I mean, he, you know, he pays the bill and everything, but he never says, I love you, he never hugs me, he never. This is a problem. Allah described the marital relationship was supposed to be in it. Mawadda wa rahma. Love and mercy. Both of these are the two ways that makes the marriage last. And this makes us, when the marriage is filled with mawadda, mercy, our love, and rahma, and mercy, what happens? What happens is that even if they separate, is not going to be with hatred and harm and disrespect. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say to the men? Huh? Allah said, keep them in kindness or release them in kindness. But sometimes when we have a situation where we love a woman and we don't have any mercy on her, or she loves a man but she doesn't have any mercy, she wants all of her, no, well you lost your job, you better do something. They didn't give you, uh -uh, no, okay, I want to call her. No, that's not the situation. Well, if you can't afford to get married, but sister, he had a job when he got married, he lost his job. So this is, this is different. This is different. Sisters need to be aware of this. That the man, if he doesn't have the ability to get married, then you shouldn't be marrying him in the first place. And if he married you with the ability to get married, and after that fell on hard times, then what did the Lord Ta'ala say? 
This is about divorce. So how about in marriage? He said, So that the one who has wealth, he spends according to his means. And the one whose provisions has been restricted, then he provides according to what, that which Allah has given him. So Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not overburden a person, an individual, a soul beyond that which he possesses. And Allah will soon grant ease after difficulty. So now when a woman is going to get married, if he's broke, like the hadith, he's broke, he doesn't have any money, don't marry him. I don't care how he looks, I don't care what he promises you. If you want a happy marriage, you want to stay married, he can't afford to get married, the Prophet ordered the people who have the ability to get married to get married and those who don't have the ability to fast. To fast. So if the brother comes, he doesn't have the ability to marry, advise him, fast, and when you get that job, come back and talk to my wife. <laughs> Simple as that. Fast, when you get that job and you get the place and everything, come back and talk to my wife. No more shotgun weddings. The shotgun wedding leads to what? Machine gun divorce. <laughs> so that's how it's going. And out. <laughs> Just like that. So, if you wanted to go right, make sure you're getting your rights from the beginning. Don't do it. Don't be, uh, like, uh, like uh, the early man advised the woman not to marry. Huh? A manana. Manana. Huh? This is the woman who what? She does things for her husband. The tamun alayhi. So she can remind him about the good that she did. Well, I married you, didn't have anything. Yeah? I let you come stay with me. I stayed in my mother's house for six months. I, all of this, you're going to hear it. So do what you're supposed to do from the beginning. And then after that, if you fall on hard times, you're not blamed. This is how it should be done. Allahu ta'ala a'lam wa a'lam wa a'lam. So, he said, At-ta'bir, the second, wa ma yahmiluhu min, min al-ma'ani, in al-kalima second tahmil, ma'ana azima, al-istikrar, wal-raha, wa tuma'anina, fi al-bayt. He said that this expression, second, tranquility, repose, and what it carries from meaning, and indeed it carries great meanings concerning stability. Warraha in being relaxed, with and and having just repose and just being comfortable. This is what a woman is for her house and her family. Second, I will call her second. She's the one that makes the stability. She's the one that makes the house stable. She's the one that she's there, she's safe from going outside. And she stays there, she can read the book of Allah. She can remind herself. She can do all of those extra types of ibadah while the man is out and about and, and being uh, exposed to fitna. So when he comes in the house, she can remind him about Allah, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell him what he read. Prepare for him that which he loves of the dunya and his household and like that. So she's second. She's the one that calms down the children and prepares everything. This is the woman. This is the woman that has intellect. Hmm. He said, he said, if we try to find a word, other than the word second, this, this tranquility and repose, other than this word that carried the same meaning, we would not be, we, we wouldn't be able to, and we would never be able to. Huh? He said, because that's the speech of the Lord of everything that exists. He said, so this is from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the sister in our household, this is how she must be. She's the one that has everything in order. She's the one that has everything. If the outside of your house is going good, you're making money, you're popular, whatever that makes the outside of a person's house happy, his, his life on the outside of his home, and the inside of your home is not straight, you're not happy. No matter how good everything outside is going, if the inside of that house is not good, you're not going to be happy. But no matter how many hardships you face on the outside of that home, when you get in that home and that woman makes you comfortable and your food is ready or whatever you like, people like different things, whatever you like, everything is ready and is, and is in order. And you find an obedient, righteous woman who has beautified herself. And if it's late, she has put those kids to bed and like that, and she reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's when you're going to be fine. I lost my job. I got in a car accident. Uh, I almost got caught in the cross, uh, caught in the crossfire. Whatever. All of that happened. You're on your way home from work. But you got home, and the wife was obedient, righteous, reminding you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
giving herself to you like a law order, then you're going to be fine, inshallah. So this is the role of the woman. This is a great role. This is important. And it's important that the women teach their daughters that. The women teach their daughters that. And the men teach their daughters that. Respect. And this can only really be achieved when the children are allowed to see both parents interact. How do you expect to raise children to be righteous wives if they never saw their mother be a righteous wife? How can we teach the boys to be responsible husbands if they never seen, seen, saw their father be a responsible man? Like we said in the beginning, fat the douche, let your team. One who doesn't possess a thing can't give it. One who doesn't possess a thing can't give it. So now, as the chef was explaining, we have to have the example. The example has to be present. What? The man is doing what he's supposed to do, hmm. and the woman is doing what she's supposed to do. He said, and we understand the secret of this expression, Ilayha, that he finds repose in her, in her, Ilayha, or to her. Huh? Huh? He says, so we, we, we refer to the woman as a second, as repose or tranquility or as the home because she is his place. She is like his nationality. She's like his country. She's his people. That's it. That's what there's Motano. This is like his place of repose. He has nothing else besides her. That's it, from the dunya. He has Iman and Allah. He has his Islam. And outside of that, he has his wife. And without, without that, he's in trouble. Without that, he's in trouble. So Allah referred to her and gave her this menzil al this raised station, if the sisters only understood. So the husband finds repose and tranquility in her. In the house and everybody who's in it, they are only made comfortable through the wife, through the mother. This is how the house is put in order. You see if the children are acting irate and they're running around and going, who's going to calm them down? Mom, I just got home from work. Ask your mother. <laughs> Come on. Leave me alone. Tell you, you're tired. Go to your mother. This is how the house is. This is how the house is. They go past the father. They know the father's father going to be harsh. Say, Mom, can we? Homie, can we? Because they know how. And they know that even, uh, you know, if the father says no, that if they ask, um, then she's going to go. So we talk them and they're going to get to do it. But if they go to Adam first, ask them, no, I told you, told you three times, no. Okay, we're going to go to Omni. They just ask their father, ask Abby, we're going to ask Omni, Omni, we want to go outside. Abby said, no. All right, y'all wait right here. She makes, she puts the house in order. The woman puts the house in order. So this is the great role that Allah has given the mother. Then the sheikh went further and said, وَلَتَكُونَ الْمَرْأَ وَلِتَكُونَ الْمَرْأَ سَاكِنَا لِزَوْجِهَا حَتَّ تَفْهَمْ أَفْوَانْ وَلَا تَكُونَ الْمَرْأَ أَفْوَانْ ولا تكون المرأة ساكنا لزوجها حتى تفهم حتى تفهم حقه ومكانته ثم تقوم بحقوقه عليها طاعة لربها فرحة راضية. الله أكبر. It's a strong speech, sisters. He said, and a woman cannot be this tranquility and repose for her husband until she understands his rights over her. In his status that Allah has given him, and then she fulfills those rights that are upon her, obedient to her Lord, happy and pleased with what she's doing. Until she fulfills those rights, being obedient to her Lord, happy and pleased, fariha radia, happy and pleased with radia, afwa, happy and pleased with what she's doing, radia, afwa. وَلِذَا يَحْرَسَ الْإِسْلَامِ عَلَى تَقْرِيرِ مَكَانَةِ الزَّوْجِ هَا الْمَكَانَةِ الزَّوْجِ لِأَنَّهَا الْأَسَاسِ He said, and for that reason, Islam guards and protects the status of the man because it is the foundation. The importance of the status of the man in his household that is respected by his wife, and because of that the children respect him, that is the foundation of a happy household. This is the main ingredient, that the woman sees her husband as an authority. That she sees her husband, he deserves the respect that Allah Ta'ala has ordered him. That she sees obedience to him as a religious obligation and not a choice. As in a religious obligation and not as a choice. Just like the Prophet 
do the, she sees that when her husband orders her, orders her to do something, as long as it's not from the disobedience of Allah, then it's just as him ordering her to pray. It's no different. She has to do it. There's no way around it. Allah ordered with that. No way around it. And this is important for both parties to understand, the husband and the wife, that the husband's obligations and responsibilities and the wife's obligations and responsibilities, all of them are orders from Allah. So do not allow your anger with your wife or your anger with your husband to cause you to disobey the command of Allah with obedience and with providing and taking care. And she don't listen. I'm not going to give her nothing. I mean, the extreme obedience, of course, she has no provisions because of that. Leaving the home and staying outside of the home and these things like that. We're talking about the normal forms of disobedience. Now the prophet, uh, prophet sorry, something called them what? The letter of the sand, possessors of the tongue. They're going to talk. That's what they do. Talk. <laughs> So, this is, you have to have a, a level of tolerance for that which is their natural disposition. Emotions and kalah. <laughs> Being emotional and talking, you have to accept it. You just have to accept it. And then you have to, uh, all the, also sisters accept the natural uh, position of most men is that what? Huh? That they are ones who love their authority. Salatin. Their authority. The men love their authority. What I told you. I told you twice. <laughs> he wants to be re obeyed. He wants to be respected. That's it. Allah has meted out all of the responsibilities. We have to accept it. We have to see it as obedience. Because, like Allah God has said, what? 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 Do not Allah said, do not allow. Do not allow. Huh? Do not allow your dislike. Or your, or, 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 your, your, or your dislike or your hatred for other people to cause you to swerve from justice. Be just and taqwa. Be just is closer to taqwa. So now you're upset with her. But she hasn't done anything for you to remove any of her rights or any of your responsibility over her. You can't take that from her. And they call and they seek revenge. Okay, your husband, your man is your husband. He got married. So that's, that's, most of the time, that's going to be the reason. He got married. You know, he stayed out late. You spend more time with the brothers than you do with me. You know, he stayed out late. This does not give you a right to disobey him. You still have to obey him. And then take an example, sisters, from your mother, Aisha, radiallahu anha. Put it to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, indeed, I know when you are angry with me. She said, okay. The fact that she looked at the beauty of this hadith, the fact that she asked how, it shows that she didn't do anything out of the ordinary. She didn't disobey him, raise her voice, Slam doors. She did. She's saying, "How could you possibly know I'm angry?" So it shows how her manners were, even when she was angry. God, so Lord said, "Let me say, huh? He that comes to God, if you were angry with me, come to what Rabbi Ibrahim. I swear by the Lord of Ibrahim. We become the Rabbi, come to what Rabbi Muhammad. And if you were happy with me, then you say by the Lord of Muhammad. Subhanallah. Could you imagine a husband or a woman being amazed that her husband knows when she's angry? Subhanallah." What kind of man is this sister have that she's amazed because of, she always keeps her composure? She's amazed that her husband knows when she's angry. May Allah grant our sisters, our daughters, our mothers, <laughs> our wives, this type of man is. <laughs> I mean, nah. So this is important. Now, nah. so then the shape goes further to say, next. At ta'a li zawj fi ma fi ma in obedience to the husband and that which is not in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is very... And this is important. That the woman is obedient to her husband in everything that does not involve the disobedience to Allah. Like it or dislike it. It's an obligation. It's a, and it's a serious obligation. Next. The Shaykh goes to say, Al-Qiyam bi a'mal al-bayt, alati hiya qawwam hayat al-usra, min al-tabq, wa al-nadhafa, wa al-khasir, wa ghayri dhalik. And after that, fulfilling her duties, her household duties, huh? because this is what establishes the household, from cooking, and cleaning, and washing, and other than that. This is what's important, that the woman also, she does that from her household chores. A household chores. And it's a weak uh, statement out saying that the woman does not have to do household chores 
And in recent times I've heard that being spread, but this is not correct. This is not correct. Look at Fatima. Rajara Anha. Bint al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The daughter of the Messenger of Allah, when she came, she had calluses on her hands. And she said, and, and, and they were just coming from a battle, and Ali said, well, go to your father and ask him for a servant. So she went, and the Prophet said, La ala adulluka ala mahuwa. Abdul min dhalika karam. Should I not point you to that which is better than that? Say, Subhanallah, thalatin wa thalatin. Wa alhamdulillah, thalatha wa thalatin. Wallahu akbar, arba'in wa thalatin. He said, she came, she said, I got callus on my hands from working hard, doing the chores around the house. The Prophet said, she said, she said, can I have a, 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 a servant? The Prophet said, I should I not point to you to that which is better than that? Say, subhanAllah, 33 times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. And Allah Akbar, 34 times. That's better than you having a servant. So, this is the daughter of the Messenger of Allah. She wasn't free from doing household chores. Who's going to be free from doing household chores after that? You know, this is the obligation. Next. And this is like kind of repeating, said doing the household chores. It's tijaba to her. Please, oh, jihad, he met Allah. Nah. Nah. And this is talking about the woman that she doesn't refuse the bed. Her husband calls her in order to protect himself from fitna. He calls her in order to protect her from fitna. He calls her in order to maybe, by the permission of Allah, bring about righteous offspring. And she refuses. This is a serious sin. This is a serious sin because if that man, if this woman prevented her husband from being with her, and that man fell into the haram after that, then she has a, por a portion of the sin without any portion of the sin being raised from him at the same time. The Prophet ﷺ said, if he was going to order anyone to prostrate from any, to, to anyone who uh, ordered the woman to prostrate to her husband. Now, then the, uh, then the sheikh went over to say, hey, that she protects his secrets and she protects his honor. Now, فَلَا تَتَعَرَّدْ لِلْفِتْنَةِ وَلَا تَبَرُّجْ وَلَا تَتَسَاهِلْ فِي أَيْ فِي تَعَرَّدْ الرِّجَالِ فِي بَابَ الْمَنْزِلِ وَنَافِضَةِ وَخَرَجَ الْبَيْتِ وَلَا تَكُنْ مُحْتَشِمَةً عِنْدَ خَرُوجِهَا So the Sheikh said also, the Sheikh, Hafidhu Allah also said that she doesn't expose herself to fitna going in and out of the house and being outside of the house a lot. And she's not easy. She's not easy with the men being loose in her speech, soft in her speech. Uh, shukran, uh, what's wrong with your voice? You speak to your husband? No. SubhanAllah with this so this, uh, this hard voice. And then the piece of man comes to the door. Thank you. Did you this, forget this out you? Soften your voice up for it. You're not really, you're soften your voice to this guy. It's Kevin. You're very soft. And then your husband comes in. And then you, Khishan, you got this heart. What, what is that? This guy paid the dowry. You're talking to him with the deep voice. And then here, this guy, he delivered the piece and you soft, makes your voice soft. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on. What's going on? Why does the piece of man get more respect than me? <laughs> Why does the cashier at Walmart get more respect than me? <laughs> no, you speak soft to your husband. That's how I want to get the soft, sweet voice. You speak with Hushan. Some of the mothers of the believers used to put stones in their mouth when they talked to them. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, And do not be soft and complacent in your speech. It's haram. It's haram. Don't be soft and complacent in your speech. So this is a fitna. And Allah ordered this to the mothers of the believer to speak to a man from behind, uh, from behind the screen. You wait that to muhunna, huh? min wara hijab. Then ask them from behind the screen. And don't be soft in your speech. Allah said, if you ask the wives of the prophet for anything, then do it from from far away. And then he told the one the wives of the prophet and and don't be soft in your speech. Allahu akbar. So look at that. Look at all of these steps Allah took to protect. This is the wives of the Prophet ﷺ from fitna. So if these women of taqwa and khashya, this fear of Allah and this, and, and, and this khashya, if they were responsible for being like that, then how should our women be? How should our women be? It's okay, I trust them. No. Islam has set up things to protect us from fitna. And your trust should not cause you to violate those things that Allah has established in order to protect us from making mistakes. Today I've perfected for your religion. It's perfect. 
Don't switch it up. It's perfect. Keep it exactly the way it is or you're going to run into trouble. فَيَحْدِرَ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ أَنْ عَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبُهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبُهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And one of those who goes against the command of the Messenger of Allah Sallam that fitna might befall them, trials or a painful torment. It's fitna in every level, in their iman, in their uh, to, uh, clicking to the sunnah. Fitna! Because why? We went away from that which the Prophet Sallam told us would protect us from these particular affairs. So, حِفْذُ المرأة ها سِرْ زَوْجِهَا سِرْ زَوْجَهَا in his honor, in his honor, if backbiting is impermissible to, to, uh, upon the Muslims in general, so how is backbiting a husband and wife? Man, that shit crazy. Listen. I mean, we fall into it out of anger like that, but in reality, we have to keep our secrets. Keep what's going on in your house secret. And then, you know, try to, we have to help each other, strengthen each other. I think when you were happy with her, you didn't come tell me how happy you were, so then why you come complaining to me when you're mad? You're not doing it to seek advice. You're not doing it to warn me. You're not seeking a fatwa. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not seeking a, a hukum between, in, 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 a, in a dispute. So then leave me alone. Leave me out of it. And it's hard because, of, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the sadness of husband. When a, when a wife is not proper, when a husband is not proper, you become sad and you become emotional. But we have to help each other because when we stop, putting these things out and stop hearing about them, then it's going to stop the spread. It's going to help towards stopping the spread of the divorce. Because every time you hear a sad story, you got, you have a sad story. I mean, you think you're going to stop it. You know, let me tell you what happened with me. <laughs> oh, sister, please. You, you know, you, you got a good husband compared to mine. He's, and then it just goes on and on and you can't stop it. So we got to aid each other because this is something widespread. And it was happening during even the time. But it's so we have to help each other. Now, the Prophet brought, and, and, and the Sheikh brought the hadith, me my Muslim, hadith of Jabir, and the Prophet said, said that the woman should not, that a man, bad man Jafi Haqqid Zawj, it's hadith on Hassan, وَلَا يُوَطِّينَ فَرَاشَكُمْ مَنْ تَقْرَهُونَ وَلَا يَأْذَنَّ فِي بُيُوتِكُمْ لَا مَنْ تَقْرَهُونَ So she doesn't allow anybody that you just like on your bed, Meaning, she doesn't, you know, commit lewdness, and she doesn't allow in your home people that you dislike, male or female. So we already went past this. No. Just from the very good man. Well, his man is Zoj. He said that also the money of the husband, the responsibility of the woman, that she preserves the money of the husband. Because of the hadith, the Prophet said, said, when Mar'ah, what? Ra'iya. So the woman is not to look at the money of her husband once the bills is paid and call something which we run into a lot extra money. It's not extra. Bills are going to come next month. So how is it extra? It, it's extra when if, if the bills came this month and they were paid and then no bills are going to come ex, ex, next month, then you can say it's extra. But as long as bills are going to come every month, then that money that's left over from this month is not extra. So the woman... The righteous woman, she also preserves her, her husband's money and she doesn't spend it wastefully. What Muhammad Hassanah, and she deals with her husband in a good manner. She deals with her husband in a good manner, so she's not arrogant, she's not, uh, you know, uh, disrespectful to her husband. She speaks to him even when he's wrong. Like the hadith that came in Abu Dawood. Even when he's wrong, she says what? My hand is in your hand and I will never go to sleep. I will not go to sleep until you're pleased with me. This is the righteous woman. The Prophet said, this is the righteous woman. That when her husband, and if the, her husband oppressed her, she says, my hand is in your hand. She takes his hand and says, I'm not going to sleep until you're pleased with me. Don't, don't be upset with me. He's wrong. This is how he said. Her husband oppressed her. My hand is in your hand. I'm not going to go to sleep until you're happy with me. So like we said in the beginning, the rights of the husband are many. So she acts with the husband in a good way. Doesn't raise her voice. Look at the hadith. Imam Muqbin brought in as sahih min malaysi fi sahihain. The authentic hadith from that which is not in the two sahihs. He brought the hadith in the Muslim, from Muslim Imam Ahmed. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La'anallah, la'anallah, la'anatullah afwan ala al-mar'ah alati tarfa'u sawtaha wa lo kanabi dhikrillah. The curse of Allah is on a woman that raises her voice even if it was in a remembrance of Allah. 
So if a woman is not permitted, oh, look, look, Hajj is an obligation, Hajj and Umrah. And a woman cannot raise her voice in Tadbiyah. Labayk, Allahumma labayk. She cannot say that with a loud voice. In the Salah, the Prophet says, the woman what? If the Imam makes a mistake, the men say, SubhanAllah, and the women clap their hands. The woman can't even say, SubhanAllah, to the Imam if he's making a mistake in the Salah. So how is about raising her voice to her husband? Fear Allah, you fear Allah. Come on. <laughs> SubhanAllah. Uh, this is not good. Tanzim al waqt. Sisters, your responsibility is to make sure everything is done on time at its proper time in the household. This is going to help your husband be a better husband. It's going to help your husband be a better father. You're going to be a righteous wife and a, and a, and a good mother. And it's going to, the time that you want, that you complain about, that you're not getting from your husband, you're going to get it. Why? Because you laid out the times for everything. And your husband is just going to fall in suit because he doesn't have time to do it in most cases. So now you say, okay, listen, and you know, say it in a nice way, not... Well, no, it's not time to, to do that. I got the schedule right here, not, not in a forceful way. <laughs> I say, listen, uh, just so, you know, I know sometimes, you know, you run late and like this. So what I did was, I don't know what you think about it, but this is a schedule. You say it in a nice way. And he's going to look. And he's going to say, yeah, that's a good idea. And he's going to fall suit. Like the one of the sellers said, she said, Kuni, huh? Kuni, amalahu, yakunu abdin laki. If you are like a slave girl to him, he'll be a slave. you eat like the palm of your hand. Don't leave him he talked about that. So, these are the advices that the Sheikh gave, advising the women, advising the women about that great level, that great role, and that great responsibility in the family household. It's important that we listen and follow these advices. We see the, the, the obligations of the men, the obligations of the women, first concerning the children, and after that, the obligations of them together. And then the obligations of them separately. That's how it goes. First is the obligation that you have upon yourself as individuals, the man and the woman. And then those obligations concern the children before they're born, before you get married. Then after that, together as a team, each has an obligation concerning those children. And then as responsibilities and obligation, each to one towards another as individuals. When we get happy marriages that create happy homes, we're going to have happy neighborhoods that's going to create happy towns and cities that's going to create a happy society. And we're not talking about completely, we're talking about for most of the part. Divorce is legislated in the Sharia. Divorce takes place. As a matter of fact, there's a sore, a sore in the Quran called Talaq, divorce, and there's no sore in the Quran called Nikah, marriage. So, you know, <laughs> divorce is a part of the religion without a doubt. However, can we at least, we're not going to try to stop divorce, it's not going to take place, but can we get divorce to where, to where Allah said in the Quran? Keep them in kindness or release them in kindness. Can we when we separate, can we have it amicably? Okay, you know, it's just not gonna work out and just separate. Instead of we separate with fighting and, and cussing and this and that and he, she's a monafic, he's a monafic and, and like and like that. Why did this happen? Because we abandoned preparation from the beginning. Getting yourself together and making sure you find someone that has their stuff together. Do not use marriage for sadaq. Marriage is not from the abwab sadaq. It's not from the gates of uh, sadaq. Marry somebody who's struggling in their religion and, and help them get it together. No. That's the, the hadith. If Allah guides, yani, bika, rajal and wahid, khayru lakam min humr ni'am. That Allah, the Prophet said, said, if Allah guides one person by you, it's better than a red camel. That doesn't mean you got to marry that person. You know, you give dollars, you care for a woman working on your job, you give her a dollar like that, she comes to Islam. That don't mean you have to marry her. But she has to learn her religion, learn her responsibilities. And then, once she knows who she is as a Muslim, once he, he entered into Islam, that don't mean he gives his daughter, mashallah, he came to Islam like that, he gets my daughter, he doesn't get my daughter. He learns his Islam, he learns his religion, and until he gets that together, he fasts. We have to believe that fasting works. Some brothers make a mistake. It's a dangerous mistake. But be careful. Some brothers say, I fast and it still doesn't work. It's not true. Get your iman together. Wallahi fasting works. You have to believe it. Wallahi fasting works. Don't say it. We make mistakes. We say statements and not thinking of it. But we have to be careful about what we say. Wallahi. The prophet said fasting is what restrain, that helps you protect your proper parts. Wallahi it works. We have to believe it like that. We don't want to be like the man when the prophet said what? Wash your hands before uh, uh, when you wake up. Huh? Before making wudu. 
لأن قال لأن أحدكم لا يعلم أين باتت يده. Because one of you doesn't know where his hand, you know, spent the night at. And the man said, I know where my hand spent the night at. And then he woke up the next morning with his hand up to his elbow and his rectum. وما يشاقق الرسول من بعد ما تبين له الهدى and whoever opposes the messenger after God is having made clear to him. نوليه ما تولى ونصله جهنم وسأت مصيرا We will leave him on the path that he has chosen. F1, we have tabi غير سبيل المؤمنين and follows the way other than the way of the believers. ما كان ها؟ نوليه ما تولى نوليه ما تولى we will leave him on the path that he has chosen. We'll no slihi jahannam. And cast him into the hellfire. What an evil destination. So don't say, man, I fast. Fast don't work for me. No, you don't fast enough. You fast in seven days a week? Not fast in seven days a week. But if uh, Dr. Oz said fast and know what you desire, say, man, Dr. Oz is dropping it. No, and for real, because he broke it down because when you don't eat, the blood really stops flowing and you start getting in the... You know? <laughs> 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 Allah said it. He said fasting. He said fast. You can tell me Dr. I said it. That's what the prophet said. You ain't believe it. That's what Dr. I said. Allah Allah said don't eat pork. He would say, why? You know, I can't eat pork. Dr. I said eat pork. You're going to get your heart, this, that, and that. Everybody said, no, don't eat pork. Dr. I said it. Allah said I would believe in Revelation. <laughs> I believe in Revelation. I need Dr. Oz to tell me about uh, pork or about fasting and things like that. We have to have faith in the Revelation. We have to return back to Samantha wa ta'na. Kufrannaka wa rabbana wa ilika al-masir. We hear and we obey. Samantha wa ta'na. We hear and we obey. Kufrannaka. Your forgiveness, O our Lord. O our Lord. Wa ilika al-masir. And to you is our final return. We have to get back to that. And I'm going to stop here. And I hope that this was a benefit. To the brothers and sisters, uh, the last thing the Sheikh mentioned was كَيْفَ تَتَصَرَّفِينَ عِنْدَ حُصُولِ خِلَالِ How should the woman behave when there's disagreement between her and her husband? He says, so that it doesn't end up, he says, it has to happen. So that, that it says, so that it doesn't end in divorce, that the woman, it has to be give and take. And the woman should be the one who's being soft and gentle. If both parties are pushing at the same time, you're going to end your marriage. If both parties are pulling at the same time, you're going to end your marriage. It has to be give and take. Sometimes it's upon the brothers, but sisters, we are trying to let you know your responsibility is that you are the one that can end every problem. Just be feminine. Be a woman. Don't combat and face your husband like a man. Fear Allah, you fear Allah. Be quiet. I didn't finish what I had to say. Don't know that when he says fear Allah and be quiet, that's an order, that's like an order coming from Allah. Why? Because Allah ordered you with complete obedience to your husband in everything that doesn't anger Allah. So you're telling me if you were to become quiet, Allah would be displeased with you? What are you going to lose by being submissive? What are you going to lose by being submissive to your husband? What's going to happen? You're going to Establish tranquility in your house and you're going to stay happily married by the permission of Allah. What are you going to lose if you go head to head with your husband as if you're a, a man standing in front of him? He's going to become more upset. You're going to become more upset. And then after that, it could end, well, yeah, it could end in divorce. So this is what I wanted to present, or most of it, inshallah ta'ala, concerning the ingredients to establish in a happy home. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit myself and the rest of the Muslims with this, and I would like to uh, let the brother Abu Abdullah come now and give some benefit. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Stop for the Abu Abdullah. Abu
بسم الله والحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the salutations upon the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam and upon his family and upon his companions and upon all those who follow upon his guidance and to the establishment of the last day to proceed ikhwan فَسُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Glory belongs to you, Ya Allah. Indeed, we bear witness that we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. And indeed, you are Al-Alim Al-Hakim. Al-Alim Al-Hakim. You are the all-knower and the all-wise. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa min qalbin la yafsha' wa min nafsin la tashba' wa min du'a'in la yusma' And indeed, Ya Allah, we seek refuge with you from knowledge that has no benefit. From knowledge that has no benefit. And from a soul that has no satisfaction. Or from a heart that has no from a heart that has no fear. And from a soul that has no satisfaction, no contentment. And from a dua that goes unheard, meaning an answer. Allahumma inna nas'aluka an taj'al a'amalana saliha. Wa aqwalana saliha. وَنِيَاتِنَا خَالِصًا إِنَّكَ وَلِيُّ ذَلِكَ وَالْقَادِرُ عَلَيْهِ And indeed, Ya Allah, we ask you, we beg you, we implore you that you make our statements, statements of righteousness and that you make our actions, actions of righteousness and that you make our intentions solely, sincerely for your face, for your sake إِنَّكَ وَلِيُّ ذَلِكَ وَالْقَادِرُ عَلَيْهِ Indeed, you are the wali of that, you are the guardian, the protector, the mawla of that and you are the one that has all might and all strength and our ability. ثم ما بعد إخوان to proceed further فعاملا بقول النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام الذي ثبت عند الإمام الترمذي رحمه الله تعالى في سننه من حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه وجاء وجاء أيضا في نفس الكتاب العظيم عند الإمام الترمذي من حديث أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام قال من لم يشكر الناس لا يشكر الله أو كما قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. so we mention إخوان keeping in accordance with the statement of the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام as it has been authentically collected in the book of the Imam al-Tirmidhi رحمه الله from the hadith of Abu Huraira. Likewise, it comes similarly from the hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma that the Messenger Ali sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he mentioned whomsoever does not think the people he has not think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or as the Messenger of Allah he mentioned Ali sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَقَبَلَ أَنْ نَبْدَأْ فِي هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةِ يَا إِخْوَانِ نَشْكُرُكُمْ جَمِيعًا عَلَى هَذِهِ الدَّعْوَةِ الْمُبَارَكِةِ الْكَرِيمَةِ وَعَلَى رَأْسِكُمْ إمامنا وخطيبنا الشيخ حسن حفظه الله تعالى ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يعينه وأن يثبت أقدامه وأن يحافظ عليه وأن يرفع شأنه في هذه الدنيا وفي الآخرة ثم نبدأ على بركة الله الرحمن الرحيم وفور بيجن جس وانا تفهم ماذا all of you brothers and you sisters, our mothers, and our daughters, and our fathers, and our sons, and our brothers, Ikhwan, for your invitation, your blessed and noble invitation to this tremendous affair. And at the head of you, brothers, we would like to thank our beloved Imam, our beloved Khatib, Sheikh Hassan, Hafidullah Ta'ala. And we ask that our Lord, the mighty, the majestic, He continues to aid and to bless and establish his feet firm upon the da'wah of a salafiyya wa iyaakum kathalik and likewise you brothers and you sisters and that he elevates his status in this life similarly in the hereafter 
فلذلك يا إخوان نقرأ معكم من كلام العلامة الإمام القوح الشيخ الوالد الشيخ صالح الفوزان حفيظة الله تعالى من باب من أبواب أو من باب من أبواب كتابه الملخص الفقهي الملخص الفقهي. So for this year, Juan, we chose to read to ourselves firstly and to our brothers and our sisters secondly a chapter or part of a chapter from the chapter of the book of the illustrious Imam, the Alama, the noble and great Imam, al Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, a book that he has entitled Al Malakhas Al Fiqhi, the summarized fiqh or fiqh summarized or al fiqh summarized. فإن شاء الله تعالى الذي أرى وأعتبره أن كلام أخينا في الله كافية لنا وأنا جئت ماذا لأستمع ولأستفيد منكم فإن شاء الله تعالى أفضل كما أمرنا بهذا ولكن كما سمعتم أن هذا القول قول كاف, كاف والله تعالى أعلى وأعلم إن ريالتي إخوان what our beloved brother mentioned, inshallah ta'ala, with regards to this affair, was suffice, and Allah ta'ala knows best. However, we've been asked to mention some benefit in this regard, so we'll try our best, inshallah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قال الإمام الشيخ العلامة الفوزان حفظه الله تعالى في كتابه الملخص الفقه وقبل هذا أعرض حديثا وأريد جوابا من أمهاتنا وأخواتنا وبناتنا وهذا السؤال من صاحب هذا الحديث العظيم ومن أخرجه Before we begin, we're going to ask our mothers as we normally do in our previous lessons a question of hadith and this question is for our mothers and our daughters and our sisters and ikhwan who's the narrator of this hadith and where can you find it? قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام تنكح المرأة لأربع. He said the message ماذا the message of Allah mentioned that the woman is married for four reasons. لمالها ولجمالها ولنسبها ولدينها فذفر بذات الدين طريبة يداك. The message of Allah said the woman is married for four reasons: for her wealth, for her beauty, for her lineage, and for her religion. فذفر بذات الدين if you choose the one that has the religion Taribat Yadak your hands will be wiped away in dust your hands will be wiped away in dust this is the Arab proverb meaning you'll be successful so our question to our mothers is who's the narrator of this hadith and where can you find it قال الإمام رحمه الله باب في عشرة النساء the illustrious Imam he mentions chapter with regards to the relationship between the wife and the husband the relationship between the husband and the wife. قال الإمام حفظه الله تعالى يراد بالعشرة لغة الاجتماع والمخالطة الاجتماع والمخالطة. Firstly, the Imam he clarifies what's the intent here with the name of this chapter. العشرة أو عشرة النساء. The relationship between the husband and the wife. He says the intent here, يا إخوان, with the word relationship between the husband and the wife. It is al that it means linguistically that which the people are gathered upon, together, to be together. Wal and to mix with one another. Arrajulu ma'a zoja to mix between the man and the woman. He says, as the Arab used to say, every group of people they have ishra, they have the relationship between the individuals, and likewise they have the individuals. Every group of people, they have Al-Ishra and they have Al-Ma'ashar. فقال الإمام حفظه الله المراد بها ها هنا ما يكون بين الزوجين من الألفة والانضمام He says the intent here Islamically, the meaning here is that which or the relationship between the husband and the wife with regards to Al-Ulfa, the, the closeness and the friendlinessness, if I can say that, والانضمام and that both of them are to live with one another, as the brother has mentioned, to live with one another, بالانضمام, with harmonization, or in unison. They are to be in agreement with one another. فَقَالَ لِأَنَّهُ يَلْزُمُ كُلًّا مِنَ الزَّوْجَيْنِ مَعَاشِرَةُ الْآخَرِ 
bin ma'roof. He says because both of the parties, the husband, likewise the wife, they both have been commanded to live with one another in kindness. They both have been commanded to live with one another in kindness. <laughs> so the one, for instance, who's given his right, rather it's from the husband, or likewise from the right, uh, from the wife. لا يماطله بحقه. He does not withhold. He does not mother delay in giving his wife her rights. Likewise, the wife. ولا يتكره ولا يتكره لبذله. Nor does the one that's given the right that Allah has commanded entrust to him with regards to. Nor does he mother يتكره. Why he's given it? He's given it at the same time he's hating it in his heart. فَهَذَا كَذَلِكَ حَرَامٌ Likewise, this is not allowed. كَمَا ذَهَبَ إِلَيْهِ جَمِعٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْعِلَمِ As many of the scholars of Al-Islam, they mention. وَلَا يُتْبِعُ وَلَا يُتْبِعُهُ الْأَذَى Nor does the husband nor the wife follow those actions of goodness that Allah has commanded upon them with الْأَذَى with harm وَالْمُنَّةِ and constant reminder constant reminder لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وعاشرهن بالمعروف وعاشرهن بالمعروف الآية سورة النساء as Allah the mighty the majestic إخوان the first آية for tonight's reminder is the statement of Allah تعالى وعاشرهن بالمعروف as Allah تعالى commands the men to live with the women in goodness فهذا أمر من الله this is a commandment from Allah سبحانه وتعالى سورة النساء سورة النساء وقال تعالى ولهن مثل الذي عليهن بالمعروف الآية سورة البقرة الآية سورة البقرة as Allah تعالى also he mentions ولهن مثل الذي عليهن بالمعروف سورة البقرة Allah تعالى says and due to the women and due to the women is that which is similarly or similarly expected from them meaning kindness generosity and I throw another And this is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah. مَنْ يَذْكُرُ لَنَا يَا إِخْوَانَ فَائِدَةً وَاهِدَةً الَّتِي تَتَعَلَّقُ بِهِ النِّكَاحِ Who can mention? We ask a lot of questions, يا إخوان, normally. The brothers remember. At any rate, not to chase no one away, يا إخوان. Who can mention one benefit connected to marriage? What's a benefit? You just heard many. What's one of them? Ahsanta. Nikah, ya ikhwan, yukunu madha husunan. Kama qalu ulama, that marriage, that marriage, if we marry correctly, it can serve as a fortification, a protection between the man and the woman. Between the man and the woman. As the Messenger of Allah mentioned in authentic hadith, that when the man sees someone in the street, or in the tariq, in the road, فرجع إلى زوجتك ففيها مثل الذي عندها أو كما قال النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام as the messenger Allah mentioned if you see something in the street or someone in the street فتنتك that attracts you or allows your desires to gravitate towards them then go to your wife or your wives for indeed with them is the same thing that's with them meaning with them the actions of you know coming together between a man and a woman the package may be different this one is in a, the bow, mashallah, the box. The, the, the ribbon may be a little different, a little more colorful. At any rate, <laughs> the action is the same. وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ خَيْرُكُمْ خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِهِ الْحَدِيثِ And the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام, he mentioned a hadith that's collected by Tirmidhi. And the name, uh, طيب, من حديث عائشة. وعند ابن ماجه من حديث ابن عباس 